watching Big Lou barbecue and the things I want to do. And this is the old Smoky Electric Smoker. It's been around in one form or another for over half a century. This is the way this video review is going to go down. I'm going to do an un uh, talk to you a little bit about how I acquired the smoker. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history behind the smoker. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit, maybe about how it works. That might be a little bit later in the video. We're going to do an unboxing. Then I'm going to show you some of the things I've cooked in this. I've cooked on this thing almost every day for the past week or so. I think I've cooked eight, eight times in it. So a little over a week. And, um, we're going to, and when we come back at the end, I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. There's some things that aren't perfect, but it's a pretty good smoker for the price. Let me tell you why. All right, first of all, it's made by Old Smoky, family owned company in uh, Houston, Texas. You know, uh, if you watch my channel for long, you know I'm a fan of the Old Smoky charcoal grills, and this is the first time I've used their electric smoker. All right. Um, it is an what they call on some websites an analog smoker. There's no digital buttons to push and set the temperature or anything like that. It's got one of these things that you plug in down at the bottom and you turn the little dial to high or low or medium. Probably not gonna use low for very much, all right? It's got a heating element like your oven down at the bottom, all right? You put some wood chips on top of a tray that sits on top of the heating element. They ignite, there's a little tray in there for drip to catch drippings, which will keep moisture into the system. There is no vents, there's no chimney, there's no way for the smoke to escape. It just burns and smolders there inside the system and the moisture stays there. So it keeps your food really, really moist. All right, this is like a, been described to me as like a crock pot that smokes, okay? Um, the history of it is it goes back over 50 something years to the late 60s, early 70s. There's a fella in Houston and he invented one using a grease uh, barrel, a grease container. Um, what do you call it? Grease drum. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and he called it the ready smoke. And he was selling them around the Houston, uh, Southeast Texas area, Southwest Louisiana area. He was selling them around the best he could. And you know, they didn't have internet in those days. So you couldn't just make a website and anybody can find you across the world, you know? Um, but he was selling the ready smoke and it was real popular. And then he retired from doing that sometime in the eighties. Well, old Smokey has been making a, they're, they're on their hundredth year right now. 2023 is the hundredth year of the old Smokey products company or what was formerly known as Burkhead Man Manufacturing. And they've been making the old Smokey charcoal grill since 1953. All right. So old Smokey, another Houston company bought the ready smoke in the early eighties. They continued to sell the ready smoke, but what they had to do was they had to change the uh, diameter a little bit because instead of using grease drums, they started using the same material that old smoky grills are made out of, this aluminized steel. So it's steel with an aluminum coating on it, so it's very, very rust resistant. And it changed the diameter a little bit, but it didn't really change the function. Another thing old smoky did is they put a very temp variable temperature control on it. The old ready smokes were just basically on and off as I understand. Okay. Other than that, they didn't change much. If you have one of those old ready smokes from the seventies, the parts from the current old smoky will most likely fit unless you had like the real, real early versions of the ready smoke in the late sixties. All right. But you got one from the seventies or the eighties, the parts from the old smoky one will fit. All right. Um, Then in the 90s, Old Smokey said, you know what? Let's go ahead and change the name to the Old Smokey Electric Smoker so it goes along with the name of our charcoal grill. So since the 1990s, it's been sold as the Old Smokey Electric Smoker, but it still says so on the box, ready smoke. So there's a little bit of the history. Let's unbox this thing, show you what's in it. All right, before I assemble it, I wanna show you some information on the box. It does say made in the USA with US and imported parts. All right, I've already got the box open, but I haven't uh, opened it. You're going to see what's inside it when I see what's inside it. Ooh, two flaps. Bubble wrap. That's the lid, obviously. That's the cooking chamber. So the lid looks like that. There's two holes in it. 
That's not the let smoke escape. That's going to be the bolt on the handle, I'm sure. Look at this. Newspaper. Houston Chronicle. Saturday, February 4th, 2023. Look at that. This is July 2023. Got the business section of the Houston Chronicle. They use news. Now, how local is that? This is not the Peking periodical, y'all. This is Houston Chronicle. It's made in America, packed in America. Houston. And there's a cool dude on a bicycle. Or, well, he's got a helmet on. But anyway, um, I've been riding bike a lot. Let's get a move on. This is a bunch of stuff wrapped in um, old paper. I dropped something or another. That's probably a handle for the side. Let's see. I'm just gonna rip this all apart right here. I know maybe may a little off camera. That looks like a grill grate and these handles fold up and fold down. So that's kind of nice, all right? Here's the grill grate. And the handles fold up and fold down. So that you can, uh, they go like this, right? So that you can fold them in, set the thing in there. You can fold them up against the sides of the thing, cook your food, fold them back down, pick the thing out. This appears to be the uh, wood chip tray, I would imagine. My instruction guide, that's what it's gonna look like. This is the electrical element. Looks like that right there. You just plug it in and um, Turn it on low, medium, high. There's no actual numbers right here. Mesquite wood chips. So if you want to use mesquite, it comes with some old mesquite wood chips. I'll probably use some hickory wood chips I have on the hand for the first few cooks anyway. Save the mesquite for some brisket or a chuck roast or something. Hardware. This is... Speedy dry, oil dry, unscented cat litter, all right? This stuff absorbs uh, grease and, and liquids and stuff. You put that in the bottom and you have to change it every so often. As you can see, you're not gonna need a whole lot. And this is the only thing I've ever seen from Old Smoky that's porcelainized. Everything else I've ever seen from Old Smoky is steel that's aluminized and coated in aluminum, like this, um, drum right here. This uh, is porcelainized. This is your drip bowl. You don't put water in this. It's already a very moist environment. There's no going to be no reason to add water. The drippings from your um, whatever you're cooking will add enough um, water unless maybe you're cooking some vegetables or something. But even then they'll probably have enough moisture inside the uh, inside the unit to cook. And that's the hardware. All right, the heating element is already installed. Here's another handle. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a Peking periodical. But I think the box was made in China. Not the unit. All right, just the packing box. The unit was made. There it is. The stand's already on it. It's got a little wire stand that's already built on it, so I don't have to put that onto it. Holes drilled out for the handles and the grill grates. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this up. You can see that's all there is to it. It's not very big, and it works like a barrel cooker. That's where the uh, electricity will plug into it, right there. Well, as you can see, I put the thermometer right about there. It's opposite the hook in the lid. I'm operating it under my patio. Uh, it said in the, run it for about 30 minutes on high. I've got it on high. It says that the high is about 300 degrees. We're pushing about 375 after about 400. 
but it is hot out here in July. It does say outdoor temperatures will affect it. And um, of course that was, the temperatures are based on 72 degrees. Um, so anyway, if it's hotter outside, it'll run hotter. But of course I can always turn it down. What I've been doing is uh, burning off any factory oils and stuff. It did have sort of a funky smell at first. I no longer smell that funky smell. So all I did was run it with the uh, wood chip tray no uh, racks or anything or i will wash the bowl and the racks inside under the sink i'm gonna go ahead and turn it off i don't smell that funky smell anymore and i'm going to wipe it all down fill it with the uh, clay granules the cat litter speedy dry stuff and um, do a few small cooks on it to get the hang of this thing and then uh, we'll do some ribs and some pulled pork before this video ends all right look i put the um thermometer right there at the end of the handle. You wanna put the thermometer somewhere along the perimeter. The reason is you're gonna have this probe sitting down there and it's gonna stick into your food if it's in the center, all right? I put it opposite the handle, that way it's opposite the hook. Now, I did put the hook on backwards at first as you might've saw in the unboxing video and so that the lid would sit up like this and it kinda of would, but it was also a little tippy. So I got it like this and this way, I don't know if you can see it, that, the thermometer probe holds the lid out this way so that the drippings sort of drip out and not so much down the um, down the thing. You do want to have a drip tray or something, whatever you're putting under here, some kind of mat or something under the electric smoker to keep it off your patio. All right. Um, that was the unboxing. Let's talk about what I cooked in it. I started with something easy. Wanted to just see how it works, so I started with hot dogs. All right. All right. Just set that right down on there, and those little things hold that um, in place. All right, some of the mesquite wood included with it, because I'm going to be cooking potatoes first. That'll be good with mesquite. The drip pan lined with foil. And the top rack's in. Now I'm just going to cover it up, turn it on, let those wood chips heat up, and I'm going to put in what I'm going to cook first. Now with the lid off, you can definitely see those wood chips are smoking, and I can definitely smell them. I've got two bacon potatoes and I prepared them the same way I do with the foil, not oil method. I've got a video on how to do potatoes on the grill. Um, in that video, I use bacon grease and this one I'm using butter uh, with the moistness of this cooking unit. I don't think that butter is going to burn too bad. I think this is perfect. I often do those potatoes just like that in a Dutch oven in my oven. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. That's what I truly like to be. I'd like to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. Shut up in my Yeah, I'm testing it out with some um, hot dogs, and uh, I'll pull the. Hopefully, they'll be ready about the time those potatoes. Those potatoes are real close to being done. All right. Well, I believe the hot dog wieners are done. You get this good um, sense of mesquite. Let's see how beautiful they are. Look at that. Just smoked hot dog wieners, not grilled, but they're ready to go. I know my potatoes are ready because that one was at 203 and the other was at 206. You're only looking at 210, and it's been another 20 minutes. This is a 300 and something degree environment here. So, anyway, I'm going to test these out, and um, this is not a good test of the smoker. What I'm going to have to do is do some ribs and some pulled pork. And after an hour of smoke time, that little bit of uh, mesquite wood put some smoke flavor on the hot dogs, and uh, the Potatoes were just right with smoke. It's easy to over smoke potatoes, but they, they were really, really, really good. Much better than baked potatoes because that I do in my Dutch oven because they did have that mesquite smoke flavor. Look in here at this, that's ash, ash, that's charcoal. That's charcoal. Because, you know, basically burning wood. But that's ash, 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 ash. So it did a good job. Did a real good job. Well, I've practiced with some other sausages. I haven't done a fresh sausage like a bratwurst yet, but anyway, uh, it's time to do some chicken. I've also noticed that I kind of like putting some of the wood chips in each of the cups and in a little pile in the middle. That's probably way too much uh, wood chips for this chicken, but I like smoky chicken. Next goes the uh, drip pan lined with foil. All right, I really like the way this thing bakes a potato. It's so good with smoky flavor. I love smoked baked potatoes, and this thing's so easy to do, and the potatoes come out so great, like in a Dutch oven with a little smoke flavor on them. And this is the first time I'm using the second level rack, 
and uh, it sits on the bowl a little better, as I mentioned earlier, with aluminum foil, and it stays there a little better if there's food or weight on the rack. So anyway, I'm using the second level rack, and the chicken's going to be on top. We're going to have chicken drip baked potatoes. That's the beautiful thing about barrel st smile, uh, style smokers. Bar I can't say it. Barrett or bullet style, vertical style smokers. Um, if you've never had chicken drip baked potatoes, they're wonderful. The chickens are going to drip down on that. Now you may say, well, wait a minute. Chicken juice might not be ready yet. Look. Chicken, uh, white meat chicken is done at 165, dark meat chicken's done at 180, and uh, the potatoes aren't done until 210. If those potatoes are 210, the chicken drippings on the outside, I guarantee you, are cooked well enough to get, not give anybody salmonella. Okay, time for the chicken. Right here, it fits in there well. I think if it's, I used a turkey, I'd have to use the uh, middle rack. Put that on, I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to check it out on it in about 90 minutes. Well, to be honest, I don't know what this chicken's going to look like. I was going to check on it in 90 minutes. Uh, I had to go help a friend with an automobile issue. It's been on here for 2 hours and 45 minutes. Um, I didn't realize the situation I needed to help out with was going to be so long. So it's been on here for 2 hours and 45 minutes. Let's take a look at it. You know what? It doesn't look half bad. Oh, you got steamy, 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 and smoky, smoky, smoky. Okay, I got the flash on and some of the smoke's out now. You know, it's not brown or anything. And no, the skin's not crisp. It's like kind of like Dutch oven or, or oven roasted chicken, but I can tell it's going to be done. I am going to check it with the thermometer. Look at those potatoes down there. Don't they look delicious? Two hours and 45 minutes, and I think I still got good chicken to eat. Hey, now those potatoes were tipping out, and this thing was tipping out at 203 in the breast. Yet I'm telling you what, I got a feeling it's still going to be juicy as if it was a, uh, maybe not, but it's not too dry. Try a piece of that chicken right there. Well, it's too hot. I'll get them to try it in just a moment. That's my two kids. Okay, I'm all sweaty. I got to tell you, that's really moist. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so it's Johnsonville, um... Cheddar, jalapeno, bratwurst, Italian sausage type things are sort of in the center over the drip bowl. And the uh, boudin is sort of outside the drip bowl. It won't drip as much. And um, so it's okay if it hits the cat litter. I also kind of want more of that straight heat coming up to it and not the moisture over the bowl. That boudin skin came out fairly crispy like smoked boudin should be. And uh, the sausages were fantastic. Okay, it's rib day. Hickory chips down there, pile in the center with a few pieces in the little cups. It doesn't really matter. I have noticed where the hickory chips are on that tray. You can spread them out, you can pile them up. They're gonna burn, they're gonna smoke. Just put a little bit of hickory chips on there. Uh, so this is gonna be the first time that I use a smoker not on high. Of course, I'm going to turn it right now and my arm's reaching down to turn it on high for th the first 30 minutes. I'm not even gonna put the ribs in there. All right, so got it on high. Come right back here, put it on. And the bowl and the ribs will go in once those chips start smoking. I'm gonna give it about half an hour. Wow, over 400 degrees. It hasn't been quite 30 minutes yet, but I can smell smoke. Look, yep, those chips down there are smoking. So it's time to dial this back. I'm gonna dial this back to medium because I want these to cook at about 275 ish. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the bowl in here, and that is hot. Put my hand down in there with the bowls there. We'll put the ribs on when this temperature drops down under 300. Well, it's been just a few minutes, and the temps seem to have stabilized around 250, which is about what I want. 275 is what I'll tolerate. So that's pretty good. Let's see if it stays there. It looks like it has stabled out a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the ribs in. Trying to do this with one hand here. All right, this is why this uh, rack is smaller diameter, so you can get it through there. That's going right on top of the bowls. It's hot in here, and put the handles out the way to just kind of keep that from sliding a little bit. And now, don't know if I get this rack in one-handed or not. Hold on. Well, Big Lou has big hands, but I wasn't able to uh, hold the handles together on the wider rack, um, quite like I could on the smaller rack. So I don't know if you can see it. 
Got rack of ribs down there, rack of ribs here. Now these are whole spares. I did not cut them down to St. Louis. I did remove the membrane and I cut that little flat meat off that's under the inside there. That was part of a breakfast sandwich this morning. And I cut them in half so they'll fit on the racks. I'm cooking them bone side down and I'm gonna let them go for about three hours. Hopefully it gets back to about 250 and we're not gonna look at them for three hours. All right, uh, just above 250 and it's been little bit less than uh, three hours, maybe more like two hours and 50 minutes. Do you see how that um, drips there? And look at those ribs. They don't really look like barbecue ribs. I know it's getting foggy and steamy here. Um, they look a little more like Dutch oven ribs, to be honest, but they got good pullback and stuff. They smell good. I still smell the wood chips burning. And what I'm doing now is just probing for tenderness. Now this is a metric thermometer, so that's centigrade. I know it's getting steamy right there. It says 91, 92. You're looking for, um, I believe between 88 and 96 temperature on ribs, but these are probing really, really tender. But there's not a lot of, you know, bark or crust on them. And they've got that gray look like Dutch oven ribs. I like Dutch oven ribs. I did a video six or seven years ago on Dutch oven ribs. That was in a charcoal, but you can also do them in the oven, in a Dutch oven, you know? Um, yeah, these are tender. I can't check the ones on the bottom, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. And if the ones in the bottom are that tender, I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off too. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got good pullback on the bones on the ones on the bottom. I got the flash on now, so you can see the ones on the bottom. So I'm expecting that they're gonna be done as well. They've got to look like from here, they've got a little bit more red color than this grayish red color on the top ribs. Well, here they are. This is the top rack. No, this is the bottom rack right here and right there and that's what they look like on bottom part that was facing the bowl and i believe this was the top rack that's what they look like on bottom and after resting there's a little there's a little um not as moist and dutch oven rib looking as they were before after resting a little while go ahead and get them cut up do a taste test with the ribs i could have let these go a little longer they're tender they're not fall off the bone they got a good flavor my son says they taste like a nice smoky, not a real smoky, but a nice smoky. I think what I mean is that they're not overly smoky. I uh, could have put more hickory chips. I could have let them go longer to give them more smoke flavor, but there's certainly a persistent and um, noticeable smoke flavor to them. It's not like Dutch oven ribs. And um, they're a little crispier than Dutch oven ribs, that's for sure, though I didn't think that would be the case when I first got it. But there's no smoke ring, but these are very enjoyable. Here's the breastbone. Like I said, these were whole spares. All right, well, that's one I've sampled. Here's another one, a smaller one right there. See, no smoke ring. Well, very tender. That's that cartilage because I'm using whole spares. There's a the bone, comes right off. Very good. They taste like barbecue ribs. Maybe there's a little bit of Dutch oven texture to them, but there's no smoke ring. But these are an enjoyable eat. Not gonna win you a competition, but it'll impress your guest. And it's a very enjoyable eat. I'm telling you what. Mmm, it's good. All right, been running on high for about 30 minutes and we're right at 300 according to this. It's pulled pork day. All right, yeah, I'm gonna put a pork butt in there. And um, let's see, I don't need to see all of my dirty patio here, but it, I, am, I am running this under my patio. Look, um, I set it up just like the ribs with the, about the same amount of um, hickory and the hickory's already burning. It's been going for about 30 minutes. I'm also gonna turn the dial down a little bit, try to get this 250 to 275 as I did the ribs the other day. Um, I'm gonna do pulled pork baked potatoes. Did I tell you I like this thing uh, with baked potatoes in it? Well, I'm not gonna put the potatoes on the bottom rack because the potatoes are gonna cook way faster than this pork butt. All right, now, Fat cap down is my theory on drum smokers, and basically this is just simply an electric drum smoker and, uh, or vertical barrel cooker, cooker, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, if I'm cooking in a horizontal pit or some kind of offset or something, I'll do fat cap up, but fat cap down in my drum smokers. Anyway, um, I do need to center that a little bit. I think I'll be able to get the three bacon potatoes here around the rack. This will shrink up some, and I should be able to get three or four potatoes around the top rack. But if not, I'll just move the butt out after about three hours of cooking, put the big baked potatoes in there, let it cook for the last two hours or so. I'm expecting five hours on this, but we're going to shut it up. And I'm not gonna look at it again for three hours. I am gonna turn the dial down because I want that needle to be right around 250. Well, at the three hour mark, now I showed you at 45 minutes, it was at the 225 mark and it slowly crept up without me touching the dial. If you wanna know where the dial's at, it's been about right there. Not all the way on high, but not at medium either. Anyway, um, if we go all the way up to high, it's going to cook around the 300 to 350 area. I don't want it that high. So I'm going to be watching it after this. Now, opening this drum smoker is not like my charcoal drum smoker. I don't have to worry too much about the charcoal heating up and getting too much oxygen to the fire. Um, but the wood chips may burn a little faster while it's open. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Woo! Looks nice, but it's still got that kind of grayish, Touch oven color to the um, ribs head. A little bit of browning right there and red there, but. And this one's an American, this thermometer. That's right at the bone. That's off the bone, 168, 169, 170. Of course, we're gonna to wanna to go to 200. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it back up. It's time for me to get some potatoes in there. The potatoes probably won't be done by the time this is done, but um, that's okay. We'll let the potatoes continue to cook. And um, this will rest until I'm ready to pull it. And I'm gonna have pulled pork baked potatoes for supper tonight. Okay, I put the five potatoes down underneath it and I'm gonna close it back up for about an hour or so. Remember it was around 158, 160, was that what it was? I know it's not, maybe 160, oh, I forgot. Anyway, I want to go another hour, at least till it gets to 203. And even if I pull it early and wrap this up and let it rest, let the potatoes continue to bake. Look, pulling this rack out was real easy with just pot holders. I didn't even need to use gloves and uh, just setting it back down in there. So that made things simple. Late July and you can hear the cicadas in the background. I turned the temperature all the way up and it's creeping up toward 300 right now. My fault this is taking so long. I'm hungry. It's 730 in the evening and it is time for me to pull this off of here. I don't care what temperature it is. I could have cooked faster if I had decided to cook it at 250 or 275. But whoa, that steam coming out of there. It's quite hot now. That steam and smoke and whatever's coming out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a, um, those potatoes look yum down there. This thing smells delicious. Gave the camera lens a chance to cool down. Yeah, we doing good. 197 right there, that, that was the toughest part earlier. It's going clean to the bone. This is gonna pull well. So 199, I'm good with that. 200 in other places. It's coming off, potatoes are coming off, and I'm gonna eat. I'm not gonna let this uh, rest too, too long. I'm gonna be eating by eight o'clock. All right, trying to do this one-handed, see what happens here. It's pretty tender, y'all. That's pretty clean. Still hot. I'm gonna get this pulled, put it on some potatoes. All right, well, there it is. I'll tell you what, it's going on those potatoes right there. Have I mentioned that smoker does a great job of baked potatoes? Um, this is really delicious. It's got a good smoke flavor. It's moist and it's tender. It's done a great job of pulled pork, especially cooking it mostly 225 until the last 30 minutes when we went to about 300 with it. Um, so once again, from 12.30 p.m. to uh, 7.30 p.m., and uh, it's going to be good. This could be better if I'd used a better rub. I used just a basic, this is what I used. Um, it's good, it's not outstanding. That's what I used that on, on the pulled pork and the ribs. I think if I'd used a better rub and I had uh, marinated it or injected it, it could be even a little better, but it's pretty darn good right now. I'm hungry. My daughter's hungry. We're going to eat these baked potatoes. Now for something a bit different. All right, those embers down there have already started smoking. I don't know if you can see it, but a couple of them are glowing from the electricity. It's hot in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the drip pan in, but not as a drip pan but as a water pan this time. Ooh, that's hot. I'm trying to do that one-handed. Glad I didn't have too much water, didn't spill it. All right, 
I'm gonna get that water to go in so it steams, and then we're gonna put some corn in here. Don't add water when you're cooking meat. It's just a drip pan. You add water to smokers that burn charcoal or wood because the fire makes hot, dry air. But this doesn't have real flames. You saw that little ember on that wood. That's not enough to make it. This is going to have um, moist air in it just from the meats that you cook. But I'm gonna be doing corn and I wanna steam the corn. So right now I'm just gonna try this out as a steamer. Let's get that um, water to steaming, simmering, boiling, whatever it's gonna do. And we'll put in the corn. All right, three years of corn. I just shucked this just a moment ago. Um, yes, there's fancy ways to cook corn in the shucks and I can season them and all now. I'm just going to have this like this and I'm going to season them with some butter and salt and maybe a few other things later. I just kind of want to taste the mesquite smoke on them and the steam. I've got a fancy steamer that'll steam a bunch of corn sits on my counter. I've got um, some other countertop devices for steaming. And I've got pots with steaming racks and stuff in there. It's like, oh, the ways to steam corn. But I want to see what happens if I steam it in this and get smoke flavor. All right, it's up to 300. It's been in here an hour. And I can not only smell the mesquite, which is a lot more fainter now than it was earlier. I can smell the corn, all right? Um, this is a very slow unit to steam stuff in. I probably won't be steaming stuff in this very much when I need to steam stuff. I'm gonna steam the corn in just a few minutes, not an hour. But if it provides smoke flavor to the corn and it makes it better than just steamed corn alone, maybe I will use it again. Yeah, I can look, that corn's done. You see the kernels kind of pulling away. Hot, but they're soft and tender now. They weren't earlier. Starting to dimple as I open it up. It wasn't dimpled until I opened it up. But anyway, corn's done, it's coming out. I'll tell you how it tastes. All right, turned it on about half an hour ago. We're up just over 300 degrees. I got it on high. Now look, I have done uh, pork and poultry, uh, chicken, and I figure turkey and beef will be a lot like the pork and, and the chicken respectively, you know. I've also done starchy vegetables like potatoes and corn in here, and I've done sausages. What I haven't done yet though is any fish. Now there's some fish recipes for the electric smoker on the Old Smoky website. Uh, I'm not doing those. I'm doing smoked tuna. Why? Because um, tuna steaks were on special and I've never had smoked tuna. But I am going to go by the recommended cooking times for the salmon. And um, they said on the old smoky thing about 20 minutes per pound. Also said that this smoker uh, is going to keep fish a lot moister than other types of smokers. All right. So I've got uh, four tuna steaks here. They equal almost a pound and a half but I'm just gonna go ahead and check this at 20 minutes anyway I'm just gonna put them right down on the rack there you can hear them searing and I'm not slow smoking these at 225 you know the instructions say cook everything high and um, everything's been getting smoke flavor in it anyway so I'll check on those in 20 minutes well, it's just below 300 now, but anyway, it's been 20 minutes, so I'm gonna open the lid and check on the tuna, all right? The smells wonderful. I'm gonna get a little bit of browning there on the top of that. Look at that right there. All right, I might have it overdone because that's flaking a bit. Yeah, yeah, I should have checked this before 20 minutes or cooked it lower. But like it says, it's going to be uh, by the way, if you want to know, it's around in the 150, 151, 153, something like that. Anyway, um, they say that this fish is going to be moister than if you do it in a regular smoker because this is a very moist cooking smoker. Okay, the tuna was really good. It was overcooked. It's supposed to be like around 125. It's up to 153, but it was really good. My son, my 16-year-old son, who doesn't say anything he said it's really good and my daughter who's got all kind of words she says dad this is really tasty i thought it was going to be dry but not in this thing it's got that moist environment i have determined that this is probably the most forgiven smoker ever because of the moist environment the chicken wasn't over uh wasn't dry the tuna wasn't dry and in fact the tuna was so good i'm doing tuna again tonight all right i cooked hot dogs sausages Potatoes. Did I tell you, by the way, that I like the way this thing cooks potatoes? All right, I cooked 
a chicken. I overcooked the chicken. I got stuck out helping somebody on the road and I got didn't get back in time. Chicken was overcooked, but it was still really moist. And the next day I took that chicken, pulled it apart and made some delicious chicken salad with it. I'll tell you what, it was fantastic. All right, I cooked the uh, ribs. I should have let the ribs go a little longer. I was busy that day, pulled them off, but they were still good and moist. No smoke ring, but they were good ribs. Even had a friend of mine testify that they were good ribs. And pulled pork. Now pulled pork is one of my favorite barbecue foods, if not the favorite next to turkey. And I've made a lot of pulled pork. And sometimes I've made bad pulled pork, but I usually make pretty darn good pulled pork. This was really darn good pulled pork, and I didn't have a lot of seasoning on it. I had just a typical barbecue rub, as I showed you, that I don't really even care for much. But that pulled pork was really, really good. I didn't have to wrap it in foil. This kept it all moist for me. Perfect for that. All right. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the smoker. Oh, well, let, before we get into that, let, let's talk a little bit more about what I cook. The corn. Um... I've got ways to steam corn that are gonna be much faster than this. I'm not gonna to try to steam corn or probably any other vegetables to technically steam it. I may cook corn in here again, but the point will be to smoke it. I won't have water in the water pan. That was sort of a little test to let me know. Basically, the water in the water pan doesn't come to a raging boil enough to really get the corn steamed fast enough. And so uh, if I want to smoke the corn, I could smoke it in an hour and I think there'll be enough moisture in here just from the corn itself to um, cook the corn through without putting water in the pan. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. First, it's not very big. That's a pro or that's a con. You can take it to grandma's house to cook Thanksgiving turkey. You can, uh, or Christmas turkey. You can take it in the RV or camping. Heck, you fit in your car to go tent camping if you got an electric spot, you know. Because it's small. But then again, that's a con because you're not going to fit a pack of brisket on it. You're not going to put a whole pack of brisket on this. All right, it will fit the pork butt and stuff like that. It's 15 inch diameter, okay? Um, pro, it keeps foods really, really moist. Con, it doesn't brown chicken skin very well. Brown other foods too, too well because everything's staying moist. Some people avoid that by just cracking the lid, let the moisture come out, let the smoke come out, let the hot air continue to be generated in there. And that helps with browning a little bit. Uh, I've got a video coming up where I'm gonna talk more about getting the foods to brown. But it's a pro that it keeps foods moist. But that's a con that if you're looking to smoke stuff like charcuterie type stuff, like beef jerky and summer sausages that need to be dried, I wouldn't use this to do any kind of meat drying or anything like that, such as jerky, okay? This is not the smoker if that's what you wanna do with your smoker. You're gonna need something that has a more um, hot dryer air type climate than a warm moist air type climate. All right, um, the next pro, it's, it's easy to use, real easy to use. And I'm not one that wants to push a whole bunch of buttons and go through menus and set to this or that or that. Well, I just want to turn the thing on. You know, some of these digital smokers, you got to put, oh, I'm cooking lamb or beef or ribs or, or pork or this, and you got to set it and you got to set the, and then you got to dial it and you got to go to menu. I ain't in all that. I just turn it on. Cons. You kind of got to check it. It's going to keep getting hotter maybe. It does have a thermostat and turns off and on, but you kind of want to go back and check the temperature. Um, cons, it doesn't come with a thermometer. Pro, you can buy a thermometer from Old Smokey or somewhere else if you want to, and you can install it where you want to. If you want to put a thermometer, like right here, you could, but you don't want to use one that has a probe that sticks out. You'd have to get one that just has a surface type thing. I have some thermometers like that that I might throw on here, but it would just have to, you know, but it might interfere with the um, racks going in and out. So you want to be careful about putting it on the surface. Um, you could use digital thermometers. If you do digital thermometers that have a cord, this, it might not seal real well if it comes out the top. You could put one of those little silicone or cork pro ports 
drill a hole here, put one of those, and use digital thermometers if that's what you wanted to do. All right. Um, other, uh, other pros, it's rather easy to clean. The cat litter in there uh, has, or cat litter, oil dry, whatever you want to call it, that claim stuff that soaks up stuff. It's done a good job of keeping the bottom, bottom clean. And what I do is I just take it and when it's empty with the grills and all, and I swirl it around like that and get a nice little layer and set it back down. And it, it's got the grease all cleaned up after I cook real, real easy. I almost forgot one more pro and con. Look, it doesn't take a whole lot of chips. Just a few, uh, you can hold it in your fingers, just a few uh, few pieces of chips. Okay, you don't have to fill that tray up. You're gonna over smoke stuff if you do. That means a bag like this, you know, it'll last you a long, long time. Con, if you do need to add more chips, probably gonna be hard to do, but I haven't found that to be the case, even with that uh, long pork butt cooked the other day of what do we say, six, six and a half hours, still had uh, chip stuff left. And you can see I didn't use very much. Look, it's only what, 150 something dollars on the old Smokey website. And uh, I think it's 180 from Amazon, sold through old Smokey. So if you buy it from the old Smokey website, you're probably gonna have to pay a shipping charge. You buy it from Amazon and you got Prime or some special deal, you may get free shipping on that deal. I'm gonna leave an Amazon link below. It's an affiliated link, but I'll also leave a link to the old Smokey products page because there's full of recipes for this thing, full of recipes for this old Smokey. So it's not uh, electric smoker. It's not gonna break the bank. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. If you, uh, need to cook a whole bunch of pork butts for people you're going to need a bigger smoker than this if you live in an apartment or you live somewhere where you can't have charcoal or propane appliances this is going to do it the smoke stays in here it's going to let up very few fumes you're not going the neighbors aren't going to know you're smoking stuff until you open the lid and then they really kind of it's just not putting out a whole lot of smoke scent it's not a little but not a whole lot so it's kind of stealth that way all right, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching the um, old smoky electric smoker review. I'm going to have a video coming up on how to brown the skin. I'm going to have a video coming up where I cook some beef because I haven't cooked beef in here yet. I'm thinking I'm doing some uh, smoked chuck roast uh, stroganoff, you know? Yeah, smoked uh, chuck roast stroganoff cooked with in, smoking the chuck roast in here. And... Um, you know, hopefully I'll get that video done. And uh, I, certainly at the holiday times, turkeys, ham, stuff like that, I'll be cooking in here and showing you that too. Anyway, thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue. I know this has been a long but a, uh, review, but I hope you found it thorough and um, concise. Old Smoky Electric Smoker, I enjoy having it. One thing I haven't told you yet is how I acquired it. The folks at Old Smoky gave me this when I went down to Galveston a few weeks ago for the Old Smoky Throwdown, where they have a barbecue competition where people got to cook on Old Smoky Grill. So I went down to Galveston, and the folks at Old Smoky were there, and they said, "Hey, Lou, we saw on the web on the Facebook page where you said you were thinking about getting an electric smoker." I said, "Yeah." And by the way, this is a paraphrase of what went on. I said, "I am thinking about getting one." They said, "Look, we got one for you." I said, "Oh, good. Well, I'll do a review." They said, "You don't have to do a review." This is just given as a thank you for all the old smoky videos you've already made. That's sort of a paraphrase of what went on. So I didn't have to do a review of this, but old smoky did provide this. Anyway, uh, I'm glad they did because I was going to buy one anyway. And my biggest regret about it, I didn't buy one of these 15, 20 years ago when I saw one in a hardware store and should have bought it then. Thank you very much for watching Big Lou Barbecue.